I'm Ryan Newman, and since I started with Indiana Donor Network and Driven to Save Lives, I found out that some people think that they can't be an organ donor. The truth is, anyone can sign up to be an organ donor. Anyone? Anyone? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Anyone can sign up to be an organ donor. So don't count yourself out because somebody's counting on you. Go to driventosavelives.org and sign up today. But my heart's going to you, Ryan. Love that shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another night of iRacing action here on the National Racing Network. Tonight it will be the Stars and Cars of the USF Pro Championships coming to you from the Autodromo Nacional Monza. That's Monza for those of you that speak English. My name is Chris Graham, joined in the booth as always by Mr. James Watson and Mr. Patrick Byrne. And I'll tell you what here, uh, James, we'll come to you first. I heard this place described as super speedway driving with a couple of turns and chicanes thrown in. Is that accurate, what we're uh, hearing from the drivers tonight? Oh, that's very accurate. There's so many long straightaways here, and only a handful of chicanes and other smaller corners uh, separating it. So you got to be really uh, conscientious of that. Any mistake you make is going to hurt, because if you lose that trap, you're you're uh, up a creek without a paddle it's going to be more akin to what what we're usually used to we've had a decent break from the drafty tracks but uh yeah we're definitely going to be back to that this week uh well in bizzle tonight we have a 39 74 strength of field third race of this week Ooh. on nrn over 3,000. this one almost 4,000 sof 2583 is what you needed to make the show at all as we see david porcelli go for a slide that's a name that we haven't seen in a little bit we're bringing a lot of the heavyweights out here alexander davidson is number one with an 83 81 i rating ted burns is the two he's only at 7600 this is going to be an absolutely monster field tonight yeah, David Portelli looks like that car is completely on edge for the qualifying setup. Either that or the way he's weaving back and forth. He's just trying to scrub the tires as much as possible, maybe spinning intentionally to try and get as much heat into those suckers as possible going in these chicanes. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out. We have most of the field on the track right now for qualifications. Only Alexander Davidson, the one car, and A.J. Pritchett, the 15, are not on the racetrack. Now, we see Porcelli doing the weave, and part of that is because the track temperature is only 67 degrees right now. 66-degree ambient looks to be a fairly early morning. Yeah, 9.16 a.m. is the time in sim. Uh, and, James, quite frankly, that means we could see this track heat up significantly by the time we get towards the end of this race. Yeah, but as of now, we're going to see some ridiculously quick times. Like, it's going to be absolutely lightning quick times. I can't wait to see uh, the, uh, the times after everything. It's amazing how slow these cars look at this ginormous 
big super speedway of a racetrack. I know, they're, they look like such tiny little ants. Which makes sense because they're like a quarter of a size of a current Gen F1 car. Uh, you know, it helps if the idiot controlling things unmutes his microphone before he goes on to a diatribe. How about the paint job on this car? It's, te <laughs> it's Teddy Burns. Gone are the white and gold colors. This one's a little Red Bull-esque, maybe some postmodern jukebox attached to it. A good-looking new skin here for Teddy B. It looks nice. It's going to be on full display up here at the front. David Porcelli setting the quick lap time as of now. Provisional pole, 1 minute 45.394 seconds. Den Denis Sergikov, second quick at a 45.406, only one one hundredth of a second back from Porcelli. Hazelworth, Labarge, and Eskew will round out the top five. See the first lap coming up on the board. At least should be first lap on the board for Ted Burns. Carl Emkul moves up into position number four. Teddy B only up to the eighth position. 46.006 the lap time for Burns. Let's pick up Denis Sergikov. Oh, it's a Jordan F1 livery. The buzzing Hornets colors. Because we can't say F1 that other scheme. sponsor name. F1 schemes are usually banned here, or at least uh, carry a negative connotation with them in the uh, U.S. open wheel cars. But I think the Jordan schemes we can let slide. I would agree with that. Uh, yeah, Eddie Jordan, still one of my favorite characters from the entire history of Formula One. Uh, by the way, yep. Everett, Everett Paddock to the top of the board, 45.083. The fact the way he basically is the only guy ever to just completely screw Michael Schumacher is absolutely hilarious. He basically forced him into buying out his brother's contract because he didn't like how he was treated when Damon Hill got the win and he told Ralph to kind of sit there and play second fiddle. Uh, fantastic story. I think Aiden Milward has a great video on that one. Ari Corcadillo is to the top of the charts. 45.075. Now Carter Lundy, new quick time. 44.702. Sergikov moves up into the second position at a 44.989. Oh my goodness. We have got some flyers going on here. Picking up Ari Corcadillo in car number three. He is working his second flying lap, as is Everett Paddock. So is Jason Miller, Carl Lemkul. Ted Burns. I believe Alexander Davidson had an off track on lap number one. He did. So the lap doesn't score. Burns moves up to the second position. 44-844. About a tenth and a half back of Carter Lundy. Six cars all within half a second of each other as the grid stands right now. Follow Corcadillos into Ascari. I, I know it's kind of sacrilege to say it, but my favorite layout of this place is completely no chicanes. I don't know Ab if it's sacrilege. Absolutely. That with the oval is the best layout. And we don't have the true old school layout here at iRacing, but some other Sims have it where that final set of chicanes is just a big sweeping left-hander. There's only like uh, maybe through the Lesmos and maybe through uh, Parabolic are the only corners you're actually hitting the brakes for. Looks like, I believe, final car coming off the corner. It is. It's Alexander Davidson, and the number one will not set a lap time. Here in qualifications. And this will be the short pace lap. So let's go ahead and jump straight into getting you tonight's starting lineup. Uh, 16 cars will make up the grid here this evening. And you hear them already trying to burn fuel out of these race cars. On the pole for tonight's USF Pro round number three from Monza. It is Canada's Carter Lundy in the Sim Racing Center, number four. Absolutely terrible helmet on the on Carter Lundy, though. Ted Burns will pilot car number two. He will line up on the outside of the front row. And the downforce racing 
number two. Row number two tonight will be the buzzing Hornets, number nine of Denis Sergikov. Lining up to his outside, the number three of Ari Korkadilos. Row three, the TNT Racing with Downforce Racing, number six, belonging to Everett Paddock. Lining up to his outside will be the law firm, Alexander Wesley Hazelworth. Row number four, Frisky Frankie, Frank Wynn, lining up on the inside of that row out of the Great White North, lining up alongside of Illinois' David Porcelli. Fifth row of the grid tonight, we'll see the PPG Paint Shell V Power, number 11 of Jason Miller, lining up alongside of the NASA Meatball Jet Propulsion Laboratory, number 10 of Brian Labarge. Rod Eskew in that stunningly beautiful Philadelphia Flyers, number 13. Absolutely gorgeous race car there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Lining up inside of row number six to his outside, the number 12 of Daniel Smith. Great color scheme there on row six. I think that's where you might see a, a decent finish come out of. New colors for Carl Lemkul as well, carrying the number 14 tonight for Downforce Racing. Alongside of the NOS Energy Drink, number 16 of Matt Malios out of Ohio. I believe that's the car that Chris Windham drove, or very similar to the one that Windham drove in the, what is now in the next race, the final Freedom 100 at the Brickyard. Alexander Davidson from the UK and Ireland in a beautiful Stars and Stripes livery carrying the number one starting in position number 15. To his outside will be the number 15 of AJ Pritchett. 16 cars on the grid. They will head into the Parabolica. And you can see them really getting the weave on here. Track temperature has not gone up much at all here. I does this make you a little nervous seeing this, James? Uh, no, because I do the same thing uh, myself now. So, yes. Thank you, Patrick. That wasn't me. <laughs> Thank you, Graham. Really You're appreciate it. You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> Field will make their way off of this final corner. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> Pace car is already the Pace car is already off the racing surface under the control of Carter Lundy. Fairly slow start down the front straightaway. Green flag goes in the air. We're underway. Burns tucks right in behind Lundy. He's going to bring Sernyakov along for the ride. Pick up the NRN drone as they head down towards turn number one. Tight, tight run through this first chicane. Oh, Burns may have the inside line through the corner, and it looks Whoa. like he will. Oh, the Whoa, trees are some so contact, in the way. Some chaos. I don't know. All I saw was smoke. Uh, well, it looks like everybody got through cleanly, possibly. Jason Miller looks like possibly having an issue back there. The field definitely getting themselves spread out here early on, but Ted Burns grabs the lace, race lead. Oh, man. Hazelworth thought about the big dive bomb into Ascari. God, this racing is so good here. And with the way the draft is, Bizzle, basically everybody that was not involved in a lap one incident is going to be in good shape here and, and likely able to hold on to the draft. Yeah, you just have to stay within a second of the car in front of you, and you are part of that big draft train. Now, as these guys start fanning out and trying to make moves on each other, that's why you see them so desperate here on lap one. It's because the longer they spend side by side, the further ahead those guys in front are going to get, and all of a sudden, your hopes of winning are gone. Pick up Alex Davidson. He started in 15th, already up to the ninth position. You see the blue field with the white stars making its way towards you here is Porcelli. As the look inside of the number nine of Sernyakov, he will get that pass completed. Oh, a little bit of a twitch there from Porcelli, though. And let's take a look here and see if we can see what happened here. On lap number one, right down into that first corner. We'll hold up here. We'll keep this one up for the oh, moment my here. Goodness. Oh, it's so good through there. Crazy. Uh, 
Okay, I think they've settled down a hair. Let's take a look and grab the replay. Take a look and see what happened here to Jason Miller down into the first chicane on lap number one. Oh, no. Oh, big clip oh. there from Lemkul. That sent the 12 off the side of the racetrack. Everybody kind of bunched up there. Not necessarily everybody off the racetrack, but definitely caused some issues, and it looks like some damage there to car number 11 as Jason Miller is now in pit lane. So we'll go back to the live look here in Carter Lundy making the pass on Ted Burns. He will pick up the race lead. And now Burns is going to have to contend with Corcadillos. Of note, Everett Paddock, 2.46 seconds back of the race leader. He's about two seconds back of Corcadillos. So out of draft range at this point, but we saw Lundy kind of doing the bob and weave there before getting into the parabolic. Are these guys having some trouble getting the tires up to 10? No, that's the snake. He's trying to break the draft. That was wildly aggressive to be the snake. <laughs> as Teddy I mean, B. This oh, is look. Carter we're talking about here. Well, that's true. Like, he's, he sits in his sim rig aggressively. Not even actually on track, <laughs> just sitting. <laughs> he aggressively sits. James, that is one of the best quotes I have ever gotten out of you here. We'll have to clip that one. That's not a very high bar. <laughs> How does one sit aggressively? Uh, I don't know if that's something I can expand on on air. <laughs> oh, we'll have to ask Andy. <laughs> oh Happy my Pilot, goodness. Though, was 3 out of 14. Uh, hey, Matt Humor. <laughs> James is on board. Looks like Denny Sergeyev had a well, a trouble of some sort. Let's take a look here. He is back in the 15th position. Oh! I don't know if the oh. car went around on him or if he got some help. Oh, and then right into the path oh. of Ryan LaBarge. Was there contact with him on the barge? Or did they get away with that? Uh, well, let's take a look here at the replay. See if we get another angle. He lost oh. it all on his own. Oh, the barge kind of just had nowhere to go. Oh. That's, he's going to be running at the back of the field now. Tough break for Sernyakov. He is going to be down 12 positions. Right now, your hard charger will be Alexander Davidson. He's up nine as this fight for the race lead continues to rage down towards turn number one. Lundy completes the pass easily on Burns. And... That's one of the, the things I love about Monza. You can complete the pass easily before you get to the first chicane. You can't necessarily complete the pass before the start-finish line, though. So if you're going to count on that to be your race-winning move, you kind of have to do it with one lap to go. Coming to the white flag, not coming to the checker. Yeah, yeah. I you can get a last lap pass in the parabolic or even coming out of it, but it's going to be side by side across the line. It's, it's going to be a drag race. It's not a guaranteed win. Which, uh, for us, that's what we're hoping for. we've lost Chris again, but we're going to have uh, looks well, like... Well, yeah, there we go. God. <laughs> Dumbass. We need to get you a big red light that hangs over all your monitors. It says, Mike's muted. <laughs> Unmute your mic, dumbass. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say, it, they call, in cars, it's the idiot light, right? The shift light? Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I need an idiot light. 
as how about this one? We have a and run into this game. Uh, well, Corcadillos was doing the big shove down the front stretch. And it didn't really get him anything. No, Lundy was able to stick right with him. Actually, if anything, it brought Paddock back into the fight a little bit. Yep, Paddock almost within a second of Lundy, which is that sweet spot you have to be in. Yeah, Emirates hoping that they keep doing this. Yeah, it's there's a, been a lot of talk about the swap draft and, and the merits and effectiveness of that. I have always thought that that was not necessarily faster because you're exposing two cars to the wall of air instead of one. Yeah. It, can one of you guys physics me the answer of how swap drafting makes you faster? Because uh, neither car is hitting the brakes. But at yeah. the same time, it, it works better in open-wheel cars because they don't push effectively. In a GT car, a tin top, a stock car, your push draft, your bump draft is going to be way more effective than swap drafting. But in open-wheel yeah. cars, the danger of the push makes swap drafting more effective. The it's theory... Yeah, the theory behind it is that the car behind doesn't have to lit off to maintain position, so they can just kind of gun it and just slip past. It, it works better when you have a huge speed differential in the draft, so you pick up seven, eight miles an hour in the draft, or able to slingshot in front of the car in front before they lose too much speed. So basically, and, you're, you're power, doing it out of slow to medium speed corners. Yeah, like it, it, it would work in an Indy car because they make a ton of power and punch a huge hole in the air. I'm not sure the effectiveness in 230 horsepower low down force open wheelers like these. Hey, see, hey, I haven't hey, been able to see it work effectively. 275, okay. <laughs> I haven't seen it been able to work effectively in an Indy car though, at least when I've I, done it or been in a pack that needed it to be done. Although worked, I'm not that good in an Indy car, so... It worked really well with the DW12 because they punched such a huge hole in the air that you're able to pick up that huge speed differential in the draft, slingshot around, and then carry some momentum ahead that the car behind has a gap that they have to slingshot around you. Uh, of note here, gentlemen, this is something that may come into play here. We are down to nine laps to go in this race. Ari Corcadillos is showing five incidents, five off tracks already. Six for Ted Burns and Carter Lundy. You swing wide on these corners. All of a sudden, you're dangerously and rapidly approaching the incident limit. Yes. Only 17x you get here. I believe now it's just a drive through though, so you're not going to see cars disappear off track when they cross that limit. But it's still a drive through penalty. You're going to lose a ton of spots. Now, for your A-Class drivers who have the A499 safety rating, they can use that to their advantage. Hey, it's faster to take the off-track here. I'll take the 1X. I'll take the safety rating hit. I've got plenty in the bank, and you can use that. But I, you got to save it for the end of the race. you got to save it for what it counts. You can't burn up all your incidents in the bank in the first five laps of the race. Well, it'll be the halfway point this time. Eight laps down. It is lap number seven of 14. Excuse me, eight laps remaining, working lap number seven of 14. Samantha Sexton checking into the comments, giving some love to Frank Wynn. Let's pick up a look here at Frankie in car number eight. He is in the draft of Porcelli and Davidson. But this is the only real battle in the field right now. Everybody is separated by half a second plus. AJ Pritchett making up some time here on Daniel Smith in the battle for the 11th position. But I think for right now, we're going to hang with these guys because, quite frankly, this <laughs> the racing is just too good here. Go on board here with Teddy B. Swing this one around backwards, and there's a look at Carter Lundy. Such a great look into the Parabolica. Oh, but Lundy's going to slide wide. 
give the spot right back to Burns. And I'll tell you what, the slightest hint of a mistake here is really going to benefit Everett Paddock. He is back up to within four tenths. It's now a four-car fight for the race lead as Paddock sets a new fastest lap. Yeah, Everett was just put down qualifying laps. Like, when he saw that relative just continue to tick down, he's like, yes, 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 and just kept going faster. Crazy. Yeah, I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's having a fun night tonight. <laughs> I, uh, well, he's gotten around Ari Corcadillos to get up into a podium position uh, where, again, this... That mental thing of you have you go from I'm just going to run hot laps. I have to just be as fast as I possibly can, and then you're gonna you just have to flip that switch to okay. Now it's time to battle. I have to watch what's behind me. I'm trying to pass the guys in front of me. You're you have to make a big mental switch, James, to go from hot lapping to catch up to battling for the race win. Yeah, it's there's no more uh, there's no more just waiting around like the the cards are dealt. It's time for you to put your hand down. Brian LaBarge, Dennis Sernikov, Jason Miller all on pit lane. Miller has retired from the race. LaBarge and Sernikov both still doing the repairs. On the incident count, we have Alexander Davidson in sixth. He is sitting on 10 incidents, eight apiece for Carter Lundy and Ted Burns with only six laps to go. The one X's for the off tracks are not a big deal. The problem is if you try a bump draft or something and all of a sudden you're picking up a two X for car contact. Yeah, that's coupled with the fact like what we were talking about earlier like you also have to worry about f1 track limits that's the big thing like you can't like just the slightest little touch will get you an off track even if you're not necessarily trying to push it and push the issue well that's a gutsy move by ted or no that's not ted i'm that so used Ari. to the original yeah <laughs> it, i just auto corrected to the old downforce scheme because it looks like it <laughs> I have to get used to Teddy's new scheme, forgive me. Blame Ted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's all Ted Burt's fault. Of note, Sam Parasala is not in this race tonight, uh, but he enters the night as the points leader. Has completed a race already this week, sitting on 380 championship points. Everett Paddock, who's running in fourth, also has a race counted this week on 367 ted burns at 326 but paddock may get more in the this the way the iRacing goofy point system works you could end up getting more points for a second or third place finish in this race than you do for winning a race that has a significantly lower i rating yeah you uh you really need to get as many positions as you can on this one because like 4k sof you're going to be missing out on your championship hopes if you're not anywhere closer. Oh, Lundy with a big slide in through that first chicane. Gosh, I hate that chicane. Just uh, let, him run, worse. let him run flat to turn one and put him out on the table and see who's got the big set. Well, it, that's not the problem. The problem is, is when someone puts the set out and it winds up costing a huge wreck, it's that no one dies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> uh, let's see, that time through, Lundy, Burns, Corcadillos, Paddock, Davidson, all picking up an off track. We're down to five laps to go, so in theory, they should be good. But that's only in theory. 
Yeah, this track's a lot like Spa, where the real-life track limits, where they drive in real life, will get you a 1x here. At even a bigger one now is Watkins Glen. They run the F1 track limits at Watkins Glen through everything on iRacing. So even if you're in a NASCAR stock car, you can't run turn one as wide as you possibly want. Although, uh, you can move. still go super far, super wide into, the, into Glen. Not as much as you used to, but you still kind of can that almost looked like Carter Lundy let both Ari Korkadilos and Ted Burns through. As they'll drag race to the line, and oh my goodness, that one was tight. Only two one-thousandths separating them at the line. It's like a plate race at Daytona. You do not want to take the white flag. You want to take the checker, but you don't want to be there in the white. Are there enough passing opportunities that being the leader may not be the worst possible outcome when you come to the white flag, though? It's not so much the passing opportunities as we traditionally think in the braking zones. It's these long straightaways that you can get a huge run built and clear the guy before the braking zone. Lundy sneaking a peek. Doesn't quite want to make the move yet. And quite frankly, this is when I would imagine is kind of a dangerous time for these guys. You're anticipating the move, and all of a sudden he does decide to make it, and now you're making contact because you kind of just got signals crossed a little bit. Yeah, that's the difficult thing is that you you're not entirely sure what the other car is going to do like you don't know what strategy everyone else has in mind so you go to the inside and you think that it might work only to find out that the other car is also going to the inside and it doesn't work So now down to three to go. It's 11 incidents apiece for Lundy and Burns. Quirkadilos has some room to play with here. He's only got nine. Quirkadilos backs out, heading to that chicane. So Burns will hold the race lead. Approaching three wide down towards the Scari. That's never terrifying. No. And Everett Paddock is now again back within draft range. Lundy shows the nose on Burns, but Burns going to be right up underneath of Corcadillos. Who makes oh, the move? And oh, and oh, and oh, yes, here no. we go. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. Carter backed out. Carter backed out, but it was still close. Yeah, like that shot. We had no way to know if Carter was still alongside. So you see Ted move up and you're like, oh, God, there's going to be carbon fiber. Corcadillo's using the new garden line. Out oh, of the no. Parabolica. Oh. Oh, that's so gutsy by Burns. What a late breaking job there. Able to hold the top spot and open up a three car length advantage over Lundy. Problem is, Lundy's now going to have... It's not going to be just Lundy. It's going to be Lundy, Corcadillos, and Paddock if they can stay in line. A big if. Big if could turn into the big F.
Gosh, this whichever car doesn't finish this race out of these top three is just going to get absolutely rocked in the I rating department tonight, too. And I say that because it almost feels like an inevitability. There is going to be contact at some point here. Without yeah. a doubt. Like, if there's any set of drivers that could get through this without killing themselves, it's this group. But even still, the likelihood of that isn't as high. Baseball Brothers checking in asking, what are they driving? These are the Indy Pro 2000, or the PM18, I guess, is the technical name of the car. The cars are the USF Pro Championship, as we are down to one lap to go in Lundy. Pulls out on Ted Burns. Here comes Corkadillas oh. on Burns with the big block. What can Lundy do? That was in the a turn life saving one? block. Oh, what a pass oh. by Lundy. Uh, I ain't completed it yet. Oh, two, two by two. Two by two. Yeah, Everett backs out. He's smart. He's and smart. he just pulls back into it. He, he was smart. He's not smart anymore. He's been going down a grade oh yeah. oh wow crossover burns and lundy were side by side for about a half a lap now it's going to be one more big shot for lundy two more i can see him making a move here into ascari i don't know if he's going to wait to the parabolica here he comes Lundy looks outside, and it would give him the inside run into the Parabolic. Oh, Ooh. big block by Lundy as he takes the lead. Through Ascari for the final time. You see the short run down to the Parabolica. Lundy trying to break the draft. Burns right in line. Paddock sits there, there as is. well. Big dive by Burns into the Parabolica. Lundy's going to try the crossover. Out of the final corner. Lundy pulls out wide. Checkered flag is in the air. Who's going to win it? It's Ted it's Burns. Ted Burns oh. over Carter Lundy. 78 one thousandths of a second. Man. I wish that start-finish line was further down the straightaway. It's so I silly know. having it right outside the corner. I know. Oh my uh, goodness, what a finish. Carter made the move too early. I, you know what? I don't even oh. know that I want to say it was too early. Because I he mean, had the crossover attempt. It's almost like Lundy would have... He needed help one way or the other, and it was not a bad call to say, Paddock and Corcadillos will probably be too wide behind me. I might get enough. Yeah, I suppose. But, like, with the fact that Ted was able to have that draft, and even with the snaking Carter was doing, Ted to basically have the pass complete at turn in for the Parabolic uh, uh, I suppose in hindsight you can look at that and go uh, too early, but that's the thing is that in the moment behind the wheel, how do you know for sure you don't? Uh, yeah, a, a fantastic drive by all four of our drivers at the front. Man alive, what a race that was. Once again, the USF Pro Cars put on one of the best shows on iRacing. After 14 laps, Ted Burns picking up the win by 78 thousandths over Carter Lundy. How about a tenth and a half separating the top three? Ari Corcadillos coming home in position number four. Only a half second back. Half a second to the top four. Good Lord. David Porcelli rounds out your top five. He's followed home by Frank Wynn, Rod Eskew, Carl Lemkul, A.J. Pritchett, and Matt Malios. Second page of the leaderboard will have Alexander Wesley Hazelworth, Daniel Smith, Alexander Davidson, Denny Sergikov, Brian Labarge, and Jason Miller. Teddy B burning them down on the front straightaway. 
There you go. Knock the nose cone off of it. Hmm. Well, Chad Knauss told him to do that. Uh, yeah, all I can hear is Dale Earnhardt saying I had to get the good out of it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a finish. Let's bring up our race winner tonight here, Mr. Hard. Ted Burns. Uh, oh, my goodness, Ted. A, a fantastic battle there with Carter and Ari uh, Everett being in the middle of that one uh, late in the race as well. Absolutely fantastic race tonight. Talk us through what you saw on that final lap because there was a whole lot going on there in who was going to make the attempt, passing attempts, and when. Yeah, for sure. We uh, we definitely spent the entire race uh, just like feeling each other out, and uh, and none of us were, were making moves into, into any of those corners. Like we we knew we could and, and had enough of a run, but but we're all backing out of it. And, you know, not trying to show our hands, not trying to uh, you know learn too much from each other. So. I knew uh, I, I knew you, you wanted to be behind coming out of Ascari into uh, Parabolica because whoever was in front coming out of Parabolica was going to win it because the line comes up really quickly. So, so I, I knew I wanted to be there, and um, yeah, I guess I, I didn't I didn't expect to be leading that much of the uh, second to last and last lap, but. Uh, I mean, uh, downforce racing. We had a fast car in a straight line. I, I had no problem pulling out on everyone. I think we had a you know a couple miles an hour advantage, which is huge at, at Monza. And uh, <laughs> Carter, Carter pulled out on me, go, uh, heading heading to Ascari on the last lap there, and I lift. I immediately lifted out of it because I was like, well, I don't want to be in front. I look over and he lifted out of it too, and <laughs> I look back and the mirror is like, well, Everett's coming, and one of us is going to have to get going eventually. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was, it was a little game of chicken, but like the opposite, like who, who could slow the most? <laughs> uh, well, that's sometimes that's part of the game when you're playing the, these draft races is knowing how to use the air is almost as important as just how much raw speed you have in the car. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, I, I knew even with the, with the fast car I had, I knew I, I still couldn't quite hold him off, you know, in the run out of Ascari just because the draft is so big here on, the, on these you know long straights. So. So it was, uh, yeah. So it was important to make sure I could uh, use that to my advantage and be behind. And uh, I, I cleared him pretty easily and was able to actually get, you know, positioning in the in the brakes on there uh, into the corner and really, uh, you know, put him exactly where where I wanted to to make sure I got a good run out. So yeah, it's just it's just all about about the timing and uh, you know where your placement is and you know coming into the last lap being in front. It, it gives me, uh, you know, the the ability to 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 put my car where where I want it to. So that was uh, so that was huge uh, being able to come out of the. Uh, you know, in in front in front there because it was a uh, it was a bit of an advantage being able to know whether I needed to lift or you know push. Uh, so uh, you know, I'll always take uh, take being out front. Well, and with your possible limited availability here as we get into the real world racing season, picking up a dub in a thirty nine seventy four SOF goes a long way towards uh, a possible championship run. Oh yeah, for sure. That, that can't be overlooked. That's going to be you know one of the the high scores for the entire season you know of, of anyone. So you know especially if I'm going to be having to miss uh, some weeks coming up, it's uh, it, it's that's a huge uh, points night. So I knew I knew coming in, I had sitting on grid. I heard the strength field was going to be that high, and I knew I had to you know bring it home on the podium uh, you know in one way or another. So so to get to get the win is uh, is just awesome, and uh, you know hopefully it's a leg up on the championship. Well, congratulations on the win here, Ted. And uh, before we let you go, get all those sponsor plugs and shout outs in here. Yep, got to thank uh, Dom Force Racing. It was uh, one fast car. And uh, really got to thank uh, Joshy for uh, putting together, getting uh, the new livery out on the car. Uh, the trading paints wasn't working for me tonight for whatever reason, but uh, I think Carl said it was working. So uh, glad to uh, glad to get that out there. Represent started off right with uh, with the W and our first official race with it and uh yeah i got to thank you guys putting on an awesome broadcast uh anyone watching make sure to go out and donate uh, uh so we fill up for the season and uh thanks to everyone for coming out it was awesome seeing uh you know not even being the number one car tonight that was uh that was kind of cool seeing getting some other high profile drivers out here so thanks to everyone for for racing tonight absolutely yeah, that was awesome ted thank you very much we appreciate you coming to hang out with us here and uh now it's time i don't see carter lundy in the booth so we will Head on down and talk to our third place driver, Mr. Everett Paddock. And I'll tell you what, Everett, uh, you had a heck of a view of the show going on for a large part of this race. Almost like you had to go from hot lapping to close some ground to then fighting these guys tooth and nail. Uh, just a fantastic drive for you. Congratulations. 
Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I think uh, I got to have a tip of the cap to Ari. I think he, uh, he was a real gentleman there on the last lap. I think it could have been different. Uh, well, yeah, I think a lot of things could have been different on that last lap. Ted talked about the fact that he and Carter were kind of playing a game of chicken to Ascari, and he says, I look in the mirror and I see Everett's coming and he's not slowing down. What goes through your head in that moment when you can see that kind of developing in front of you? Yeah, you know, well, obviously it was like, is there any way I can take advantage of it, right? You know, is there a spot where I could maybe slip in there? But, you know, those guys, let's put it this way. Those guys are playing like three-dimensional chess, and you know I'm playing checkers with like a four-year-old back there, so it's not, <laughs> not going to happen. Well, I tell you what, it was an awesome drive for you, and, and quite frankly, a big, big points night for you as well. Uh, sitting second in the championship standings, picking up uh, a big, big haul tonight. Congratulations on that! And uh, before we let you go, do all those sponsor plugs and shout-outs before we let you out of here. Yeah, Roger that. Thanks, guys, again for a broadcast tonight. And uh, I want to shout out to my TNT teammates and the DFR guys. I had a lot of fun this week. All right, buddy. Well, thank you much. We appreciate you coming to hang out with us here in the booth. And yeah, unfortunately, it looks like no Carter Lundy. Um, I, I can see but a little bit of frustration. And quite frankly, he just forgets to join the booth half the time as well. Uh, but th these races are, uh, I will say this, uh, Bizzle, it sounded like Ted Burns was winded at the end of that one yeah definitely trying his hardest to go and get that one huge move he made down the back straight into the run the parabolica i mean that'll take the wind out of just about anyone just the adrenaline rush you get from doing that especially on a guy like carter lundy yeah and then james we start to think about you know the the possible championship scenarios that could develop it's very early in the season haven't even gotten to the four weeks that you will eventually be dropped yet but your top five in points as they stand right now, Ted Burns, Everett Paddock, Ari Corcadillo, Sam Carasala, and Brian Labarge. This may come back to bite Sam as the night that he regrets not being able to run purely because the SOF was so high. Yeah, of all of all races, of all SOFs not to uh, not to be here, uh, this one is definitely uh, painful as uh a lot of lot of points on offer, but Sam's a quick driver, so it might not make a difference at the end. But yeah, it, it's hard hard to say. And I, I, now I am in the middle of. See if you can hear that. We are tearing off the March calendar and heading to April. I can't believe the first quarter of 2024 is in the rearview mirror. But thank that, God. Oh uh, well, yeah. Uh, Monday night, the Silver Crowns head off to Motegi. That is going to be... Actually, I am looking forward Blah. to the entirety of next week. What? Uh, Silver Crowns at Motegi is going to be fun. Call it a hunch. It's going to be a good show. Tuesday night... It never is. The Sprint Cars are going to visit Slinger Speedway. If Monday night's a dud, Tuesday night sure isn't going to be. Slinger Speedway for the iRacing Sprint Car Cup, followed by the TNT Shock Series returning after a couple of week break. They're going to visit The Rock, Rockingham Speedway in North Carolina, Talladega for these cars. These PM18s running at Rockingham, that show is going to be crazy intense. And then Thursday night, the USF cars head off to Okayama for what should also be a very, very good race. We're looking forward to it. Also, a couple of weeks from now, the Ver or Vintage IMSA series here on iRacing, heading off to Road America, the uh, Nissan GTP and the Audi 90. Mm. At Road America, that is going to be an incredible iRacing special events weekend. Start practicing up those cars uh, because it is going to be a darn good show. That will come up the weekend of April 12th through the 14th. You don't want to miss it. Uh, also, ooh, look at that. We got some Spec Corvette stuff coming up in April, too. Going to be a great, great, great month of April. But with that, it's time for us to get the heck on out of here for Bizzle. James and everybody else here at the National Racing Network that gets these shows on the air. My name is Chris Graham. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us, and we will talk to you all soon. Have a great night, everybody.